Hello again, fellow audiophiles. I am Wave Theory, and I am back to talk more shit, specifically about this little piece of shit. This is the Shit Magni Unity headphone amp. This was a gift from the friend of, from a friend of the channel. The starting price on this unit is 119 US dollars for the black finish, 129 US dollars for the silver finish. And then it's 189 US dollars if you have the black finish and you add an ESS DAC card, 199 US dollars for the sil silver finish and that same ESS DAC card. All right, um, this ended up, I actually really enjoyed reviewing this. This ended up being um, a, a very slam dunk way for uh, me to recommend uh, newbies getting into the world of HeadFi. So stick around after shameless self-promotion and uh, find out why I say that. Hi, I'm Wave Theory's Human Companion, and he wants you to know that your support of this YouTube channel helps keep the reviews coming. If you enjoy Wave Theory's honest, thorough style, then make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and check out the links in the description below to sign up for the Patreon or send him a tip through PayPal. All right, enjoy the musings. So the friend of the channel who very graciously gave me this uh, sent it to me because he wanted to know if this unit is a good place to start uh, new people off into this hobby. And yes, it is. And so we'll unpack that here. And he sent me the silver version that has the ESS DAC card, which is an ESS 9018, I believe, um, in, the, in here as well. So I mostly reviewed this as an all-in-one unit using the internal DAC and that sort of thing. So um, we'll go ahead and jump right into it. Some uh, specs on this thing. Again, so the starting price for the black version, no DAC, 119 US dollars. Silver version, no DAC, 129 US dollars. Uh, black version with DAC, 189. Silver version with DAC, 199. Power output from the amplifier here is rated at three watts per channel into a 16 ohm load, two and a half watts per channel into a 32 ohm load, and then we'll just go ahead and jump all the way to 600 ohms, where it is rated for a 220 milliwatt output. You see that it is a very small unit here. Um, it just literally fits in the palm of the hand kind of size. Um, and it is light. One of the reasons that it is so light is because the power brick, it uses an external power supply. Um, you know, it's a wall wart, basically. This is a 16 volt AC output, 16 volt, uh, 1000 milliamp or one amp for so 16 watt output. And again, it's an AC output. It is not an AC DC converter. So if you want to use an aftermarket power supply, just be very mindful of that. Okay. Quick unit tour on this thing. Again, it's tiny, but it's still well made. Like it's like that, this aluminum plate on here can sit a little bit loose. So that's why it's knocking when I hit it there, but it's an, it's a sturdy aluminum construction with nice rubber feet here on the bottom. Okay, all that, the uh, potentiometer here, the volume knob and all that has a nice feel to the turn and these switches on the unit have a pretty satisfying click to them and, and so forth. So I think it's a well done, well made unit here. It is assembled in Texas, I believe, is where uh, shit puts this one together. All right, so on the front, we have the quarter inch single ended headphone output here. We have the volume knob and then we have two switches. One is to rotate through the three gain stages. So there are three gain stages on this device, a negative gain or a 0 0.3 gain, which I think shit says is a minus 10 dB. And then there's like a flat gain and then there's a plus five uh, gain, which uh, translates to a 15 decibel uh, boost in output level. And then here's the switch to switch between the DAC card if you have one installed or the RCA input on the back, which I will show you now. All right, so here is the AC power input that comes from the power brick. And then we have the power switch on the back, which is a you know classic shit move because company shit always puts their power switches on the back. On a unit like this, that doesn't really matter because I think it's mostly just gonna be left on by most people uh, because it has fairly low heat output, even with the DAC um, module in there. It just gets moderately warm, never really anything to be concerned about. Then we have two sets of stereo RCA connections right here that are single ended. We have a, an output and then the input. The output is a pre out, which can uh, be used here from the volume knob. So you can connect this to a pair of 
powered speakers or route this to a tube amp or whatever you want to do with that and use it as a preamp. And then we have the RCA input here to connect to an external DAC. And then right here, we have the USB-C input for the internal DAC card. And this USB-C input is just a little bit on the chintzy side. It is a very kind of cheap feeling metal to it. So be careful with that. You don't want to bend that up and it looks like it's fairly easy to bend. So that's just the one build quality complaint that I have there is just that the USB-C input on this thing is just on the cheap and chintzy side. Okay, but that is the build of the unit and all of that, so let's go ahead and turn our attention towards sound. Test gear that I use for this, um, it, I sourced it mostly using my Microsoft Surface Pro 4, uh, which is a Windows 10 based, a laptop basically, um, using Ottervana. Uh, to play mostly local FLAC, uh, lossless or high-res FLAC files um, or DSD converted to FLAC because there is no DSD decoding on the internal DAC on this thing. It tops out at 24-bit 192 kilohertz PCM files and it does not do MQA either if you need that. All right, but back to the source gear. Um, I took it to my office at work at my real job and um, it's not a close real job. I have a real job. So I took it there and I used the, the laptop with Ottervana where I typically like to use Rune or Rune Arc because the Unison USB on the, uh, the DAC module here does not talk to uh, um, my Android phone at all. Like my, I plug my Android phone in uh, to try to use Rune Arc and uh, use it and the phone recognizes it, the Rune Arc app recognizes it, recognizes it, but then refuses to output any sound to it. So I basically had to use the Windows 10 based laptop and then use Ottervana because Rune to this point has failed to release an Arc app for a desktop application. All right. Um, but then headphones that I used uh, at work, I used uh, my Focal Radiance because that's my favorite closed back headphone still overall, um, I think, and uh, is easy to drive and all that. So I primarily use that here on this thing. And then I did bring it home for a little while, still using the same source gear. Um, and uh, I tried the Hi-Fiman HE400 SE, the Mastrop Sennheiser HD 6XX, and the Biodynamic DT880 600 ohm version, uh, just to see how the amp would uh, respond to those harder to drive loads. And also, because I think the HE400 SE, I think that was the one that's 109 US dollars anymore, is like the best starting place if you're trying to get into the world of audio file headphones. Like it's just um, my recommendation for a starting point. So I wanted to see if this could drive that. Okay, what did I learn? Um, it handled all of those headphones that I just mentioned really well. So the amplifier in this thing for the price is genuinely impressive for the level of drive and control that it has. The one exception to that statement would be the DTA 8600 ohm is still fairly sibilant in vocal. So sharp S's and T's and all of that still come through on that headphone. But if you use that headphone for instrumental music on this little amp here, it can sound really good. Okay, uh, like Mountains by Hans Zimmer sounded genuinely impressive and plenty loud on the DT88600 ohm through this little thing in there too. But like this one also does a good job of like bringing out some of the fullness that um, in the in the HD 6XX, like the 6XX, if it, you don't have enough voltage output for it, it'll roll off really quickly in the bass and also in the treble. And this little amp does like the best job I have heard of any amp at this price, really filling out the, and giving that the HD6XX that like that full and complete sound that it is capable of that you often get from like tube amps and all of that sort of thing for it. Like not quite to that level, but like did, does the best job yet that I have heard and does a very competent job, period, driving that headphone from this amp. And the HE400 SE also sounded really good. Full, natural, hard hitting, good timbre, good spatial presentation, good resolution and all of that coming from this thing. So 
that it pairs really well to that headphone I think is also great and again kind of takes me back to this is an excellent starting point to get into um, you know audiophile headphones and start your head fi journey because it powers a lot of those attractively priced entry-level audiophile headphones really well it even scales up reasonably well because my focal radiance focal radiance which is a 1300 US dollar headphone also sounds very good on that full punchy good resolution and holography and all that does it sound better does the radiance sound better with higher end source gear of course but it sounds really good as a starting point coming from this little amp right here all right so the sound signature and the presentation on this really quick and i'm just going to say don't stress about this too much because at this price you just need to beat the direct headphone output on a laptop or something like that and this clearly does that but it is a mostly neutral sonic presentation with a little bit of hint of warmth in it. It's not quite as warm, rich, full as like something like Shit's Asgard 3 is going to sound, but it's also not as like pure, true, neutral as like their uh, their Magnus kind of sound uh, or like a JDS Labs Atom is, is going to sound. Like not quite neutrality or clarity or you know that kind of sound coming through there where it's almost clinical. Not like that either. It's kind of in between those two. So hint of warmth into smoothness to it and all of that but uh pretty even timbre and tonality and all of that through the entire frequency spectrum and again it's not going to be world beating but for the price what it does for spatial holography is also really good so there's a new wave of like entry level headphone amps and all of that um, out there right now that's kind of in that 120 to 150 dollar range and i haven't heard them all yet but this one I can tell you is very good and it's easy to recommend as a starting point for those who are getting into the world of audiophile headphones and all of that. It's easy to use, it's compact, it's uh, yeah, just a I mean, just broken record at this point. It is an excellent starting point. So if you are new to this hobby and you've got yourself your first nice pair of headphones and you're like, I wonder what this amp and DAC thing is all about, okay? very reasonably priced all in one unit here that you can check out that's going to make your headphones sing a lot more than what the output on your laptop your the headphone output on your laptop is going to do and all of that just a very full rich fairly detailed sound for the price and uh, that sort of thing lots of control okay and uh, dynamics to come with it and all of that in a small package well built assembled here in America if that matters to you and all of that sort of thing. So I am Wave Theory. This has been my review of the really strong Shit Magni Unity um, with the internal DAC. Okay, um, if you need a little bit more flexibility, there's nothing wrong with buying their matching Modi outboard DAC if you need SPDIF inputs and all of that. Um, but yeah, excellent starting point. Another job well done by Shit right here. Um, so we'll go ahead and leave it there. So I'm Wave Theory. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment, check out my PayPal, my Patreon, and generally do those things you do to support cha a YouTube channel. So thanks again for watching, and as always, enjoy the music.